One thing to be careful for is that the test scores such as TOEIC, those tests do not generally represent best of how uh, fluent the candidate or people speak English because people in Korea tend to emphasize their study on grammar and being just focusing on acing those tests. So it's important to screen and talk to the candidates to see whether they actually do speak English fluently. So just a real matching of expectations. If, if you're looking to have someone based on site in a kind of uh, second tier city, somewhere like Daegu or Daejeon or, or Gwangju, you know, somewhere quite, quite far from Seoul, that the sheer talent pool is that much smaller. And particularly if we're talking about global company matching, then, then it's going to be a lot harder. In a hiring process, the candidates definitely do care about whether they can work from home. Candidates told me that uh, if the position is like, working from home based, then uh, they would consider. Everything in Korea is really fast and people are used to being fast, used to working in a fast environment as well. In terms of recruiting, I think companies should focus on being fast being well organized and the process should be rapid because if the companies are not fast enough, they will lose candidates in the process to other companies or the candidates might lose interest in the company because of the slow process. Korea is one of the uh, countries where more interested or aligning age and the job titles. So for example, if we call like directors level, then we presume that it will be late 30s or over 40s. The director's level, salary level should be like an X amount. It's re it really depends on the company culture or the company size. Some companies don't even have a Korean title and someone with like five years of experiences already at managerial level or the director's level. I think in Korea, people tend to put more focus on the company image the company name, the name value of the company, because our generations grew up seeing and listening to our parents um, saying, oh, go into this company, go into Taekyo. So we put more focus than uh, other countries relatively, I think. Um, I think this company image is really important, a thing to nourish because everything goes viral, viral really quickly these days because especially in Korea, the online community is more active and becoming more active as um, years go by. For example, there are platforms like Job Planet, which is like Glassdoor, and there is also Blind, where people talk about their companies and what they experience at their companies and mm -hmm. review. Maintaining this good company image culture is really important, and this is for everyone to do, not just the HR, but Everyone in the company should really um, care about this company image. So Korean company do provide more detailed information about the uh, benefits. So for example, uh, how much is provided per month or per year for the cafeteria or transportation or mobile, whereas the global company is more focused on the base salary is how much around this area plus the, what certain amount of bonus, plus whether there's stock option or not, and other benefits can be talked during the recruiting process. So I think giving full of information and provide the flexibility and giving the option of whether candidates choose what kind of benefit they want is better for the mm -hmm. candidates. So they can actually compare and they don't need to wait for that update. The salary negotiations should be minimized, as the PowerPoint says, um, really quick and not take too long of a time because Korean people are used to being fast and they are not really patient. If you know how much the candidate is seeking for a position and how much they are expecting, if it's within the budget, I would highly recommend giving the highest amount in that band and surprise the candidate because it will do good for both sides. And just imagine the amount of value and money you're losing if you do lose that candidate and leave that position vacant for a longer period of time and versus how much value that person can bring to the company.
candidates are more attracted to the permanent uh, positions. From the beginning, providing uh, this position is permanent base, then I think that definitely it's an like, attractive point. Because when they're looking for the job on the job site, then they can actually filter whether it's a temporary or fixed term job or the permanent base. So providing the position is which is the permanent, the, the position is more likely to bring the more talents. It really comes down to expectations. A lot of people, as they enter the candidate recruiting process, have very low or negative expectations when it comes to how the process is going to run. And the companies that are really being able to onboard the best talents and be able to retain them are the ones who are actually being able to delight them along the way. This means that, you know, if, if expectation is that feedback will be delivered within five days, that that feedback comes back within two days. If the offer was originally expectations were set at 100 million Korean won, the offer comes back at 105 or 110 million. This, uh, this concept of surprise and delight is incredibly effective at creating ambassadors for your brand, for your company. And those ambassadors are the employees, the ones that you successfully hire, but even the, the candidates and other people involved in the process who, even though they might not finally get an offer and be hired by your company, can go away saying, I had a great conversation with that company. I had a really good interview process with the HR. I didn't, it didn't work out for me at this time, but who knows? Maybe one year later, two years later, that person could uh, be eligible, could be somebody that you would like to hire as they um, upskill, train and gain more experience. But even more, they, of course, could be your customers.